Welcome to Mind Over Matter. This is Elena Belov, and I'm here today with Dennis. Hi, Dennis. Hi. How are you doing? Well, thank you. So, this is your first time doing hypnosis? Ah, uh, yes, it is. Wonderful. I'm going to talk a little bit about hypnosis uh, in a few moments, but I want to hear about your thoughts. What are you looking to achieve? T uh, tell me briefly. Well, um, I'm an actor, a professional actor, and um, I've noticed that as I go into meetings with higher uh, people of higher importance, um, I tend to, my nerves tend to get to me. I'll uh, stutter over my lines, or I'll get very, very bad co cotton mouth. And it's something where if I'm in a safe setting, like in a classroom setting, it doesn't really happen, or it doesn't happen as bad or as pronounced. But as I go into meetings with people of more importance, or if the meeting is more important, uh, the nerves get to me. And, and um, that, that's common for, uh, for actors, performers. Do you feel like you, um, you're more aware of the fact that there is an authority, that there's some sort of judgment? I remember um, when I was in high school, for instance, uh, in track and field, I was doing the shot put, and I had thrown further than anyone else previously. But when I went to actually perform in this, there was some little voice in the back of my head uh, that wouldn't let me do as well as I had done in the past. And it's sort of that sort of thing. When I get to the crux of a moment, there's something that holds me back from performing my best or self undoing or. Um, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about hypnosis. Uh, hypnosis is a natural state of mind. It's a state of relaxation. It's a state of receptivity to suggestion. So in other words, we go in and out of hypnosis at least twice a day when you wake up in the morning and when you go to bed at night. It's a state of deep relaxation and when I guide you into that state of mind, I'm going to work with your unconscious mind. So whatever belief you have, beliefs you have in your mind, if they are limiting, uh, if you have any beliefs that are limiting in nature, um, disempowering, we can work with them. So for example, you mentioned there is this uh, voice, the inner dialogue that takes place in those um, important moments. And we need to figure out exactly what that voice is telling you. At some point, you may have started having that voice or that thought, those beliefs. Uh, there may, may have been a reason. Uh, we can go back and try to understand. Or um, we can simply communicate with your unconscious mind by saying, whenever that started, whatever the reason, whatever the cause, it has no connection with who you are today. So that would be sort of like a deprogramming uh, mm -hmm. mode. Mm -hmm. Because past doesn't equal to present, it doesn't equal to future. Past is past. So we can disconnect. So for example, um, I work so, so much with performers, actors, and they, they may have at times this disempowerment and you know, stage fright. Perhaps somebody judged them, somebody criticized them. Maybe they failed once and they go back to that event. Maybe their um, teacher uh, criticized them. They had a harsh teacher. I had one uh, musician who had a very harsh teacher, and um, and he also had a partner who's who's been kind of making fun of him. So that put a lot of pressure on him. Um, they, you could have a, a a parent who's very strict and authoritative and critical. So all of these things can play out in forming the inner inner thought or dialogue or self extreme self-criticism, you know, or they can be something else, I don't know. We're going to go back in time and we're going to uh, disconnect from all events, situations and circumstances that could have created a limiting belief that does not allow you to shine and be your best. There's been a moment where I felt a bit of a circumspection where I'm not in the moment, I'm more thinking about the people outside of me, sort of a judgment. You know, am I being judged in the moment? That sort of a thing. Yeah. That's been an over, um, overriding, uh, recurring mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, thought in the moment, I guess. Right. So, and that's common too. Uh, I'm being judged, right? So, in other words, you become self-conscious. Yes. And uh, you become too aware of others mm -hmm. as opposed to being present and being in the moment mm -hmm. and being your best. Mm-hmm.
and you do realize that that that's that's the, this kind of pattern doesn't help you perform, right? It's debilitating, and because I mean, all, what I've what I've learned, uh, you've talked about a difficult parent. I had a very judgmental parent, uh, and very difficult. Um, uh, but and and so I would step in expecting automatic judgment. But what I've learned mm -hmm. is that people really want you to be successful. People want you to do to do well, and they are supportive. Uh, and then they're just taking it in. There's no judgment at all. And yeah. but so it's my thoughts, my worries about that precede the action and that what makes me uh, self-conscious. Yeah, it's as if the audience is not on your side or, or those you know uh, casting directors, right? Those people that are, um, do, whoever, you, you go on auditions, right? That's mm -hmm. where you get to experience that. So mm -hmm. casting directors. It's as if they are, they're, they're, they're your enemy or something like that. They're not on your side. They're there to like judge you or like find a flaw and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, and you just mentioned that it's, they, they want you to succeed. They want you to do your best. Sure. Right. It's in their best interest for me to be the one that they yeah. cast. It makes their job easier. Exactly. So we just have an old programming there in your mind. And uh, the old programming, as you mentioned, may have started from your critical dad. Right, mm -hmm. and your your dad, do you feel like your dad wanted you to to be successful, or, or what, what, what what could it be? It, it was a complicated relationship. Um, you know, I was uh, I, I, I was a, I was always a performer as a child, mm -hmm. um, and always had uh, gifts in that area. My father was very um, do what you're supposed to do type to go to a regular job, do the work, do the work. Uh, and so he didn't really understand that. But at the same time, he wanted that sort of thing for himself as well. So I'm sure he had the bug as well at some level. But yeah. he had children early and wasn't able to uh, pursue that. And I think mm -hmm. on some level there was some uh, uh, discontent with my choice for freedom. So you do realize that he wanted the best for you, but he just didn't know how to express Oh, sure. That, I, you right? know, I, I've, yeah. I've uh, reconciled all this stuff You're now. I mean, I, I, everyone does the best that they can, and he was doing the best that he could, given what he was provided with as a child and, mm -hmm. and by example. So uh, I don't think it was a conscious thing. But it's amazing how this could have created some sort of um, thought virus for you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Something for sure. That prevents you from shining and being your best as a performer. So that's why hypnosis can be really powerful to help you eliminate that. My family is a family of, of deep, deep, deep love, but by the same token, they are very filled with doubt and self-doubt. And so they'll, you'll, say, they'll, you'll hear something from them like, oh, well, you'll never be able to do that, or there's no way you're going to do that, or it's, it's, a, it's impossible for you to do that. Or, immediately without even really understanding uh, the situation or what's really going on. So I think that's part of the programming probably as well. You said it's a loving family, right? But there was this overall belief that you, you won't be able to get that. You're not gonna, you won't be able to do that, right? You're mm -hmm. not going to get that, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And why do you think it was? Um, I think probably coming from um, deep poverty in the deep mm -hmm. south. Yeah. Um, pr pr probably trying to meter uh, the desire for success when there's all this, uh, the, the odds stacked against you. Mm. So, uh, but within that, there's a lot of happiness and joy sure. within the op oppressed time, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's almost as if you, you, you want to protect yourself, right? Yep. You're like, you, you, you're not going to get that, so you just be, be okay with what you have. You're not mm. going to get that, so just preparing yourself for not succeeding, right? Yeah, like and I, I remember one time I was uh, driving up to a, to a, a nightclub, and, uh, and well, I was with some friends, but the doors had closed, and we drove up, and I was like, oh, it's closed, we're not going to get in. But I, the, the guy in the front of the car was like, why would you say that? You have no idea whether we're going to get or not you have an automatic negative thought about things. And yeah. I was like, wow, wait a minute, I'm a really positive person. Yeah. I'd never heard that about myself mm -hmm. before. And the doors, actually, it's an interesting metaphor that the doors will be closed for me. You mm -hmm. know, you mm -hmm. just mentioned the door in the club, but it's just the doors in acting world or yeah. in a performance, the doors will be closed. And the more you think that thought, the more you digest it in your head, 
the more you become stagnated, right? Yeah. Because it's a negative thinking. Negative thinking doesn't allow you to move freely, talk freely, right? We're going to do a few things. First, uh, I'm going to use a hypnotic induction to help you relax into the state of receptivity. Your mental noise will be reduced. Then I'm going to work with visualization. I'm going to have you visualize uh, getting parts, uh, going through your auditions, getting parts, being on film and television as an actor and thriving because I want your mind to see it and feel it and hear it as if it has already happened. Uh, people talk a lot about visualization and the power of, of visualization. So it is powerful, but not because it's creating something, you know, magical with the universe per se. It's really exciting your mind. Athletes use a lot of um, uh, visualization of their, you know, uh, targets, successful targets, because it allows your mind to see and rehearse your own success. You begin to believe it. You begin to feel it, right? So your body recognizes it. And your body remembers the feeling. Oh, that's what it, what it feels like. It's easy. I can get there. So show your mind what you want, and it will do everything possible to achieve to achieve that. It's almost like movies have trailers, right? You have, you show a trailer to someone, and, and people get, oh wow, this is this is exciting. I want to go see that movie. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have to have a little trailer and show your mind what's it like. What does it feel like for Dennis to have those those acting parts? How easy it is, right? What what kind of sensation do you have in your body maybe you're saying something to yourself like i did it it's just it's it's so easy i'm awesome you know it's just this overall self sense of self-esteem that you'll have so visualization then i'm going to work with uh suggestions giving you positive suggestions uh, which is the opposite of what you were thinking it's possible for me i deserve it it's doable it's easy People like me, I am positive, I'm likable, doors are open, they always have been open. I just have to be there uh, in the right place at the right time. It's happening, you know, the life is happening for me. I am an actor, I succeed every day. So suggestions like that positive uh, will uh, instill in your uh, inner unconscious mind. The third thing that I'd like to do is um, I'd like to help my clients establish uh, an anchor, like a trigger into a state, into a desired state of mind. So for example, uh, if you go on your additions, ideally what you want to feel is a state of relaxation, right? Being present, where things are just flowing. It's just that everything's happening, you're connected with yourself, people around you. Uh, so it's the opposite of the stagnation, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, everything's awesome. It's just like, like you're swimming it's like like ecstatic almost like ecstasy you know that feeling when then everything just flows mm -hmm, especially mm -hmm. as an actor when you're on stage when you're connected so you want to experience that same feeling everybody's they're all your friends they're on your side everybody wants you to succeed um, there's no pressure in it even if even if there is pressure it's good it excites you because nervousness is an excitation of a nervous system you're gonna feel excited you're going to feel happy, you're going to feel connected. And that state of mind, which you're looking for, I'm going to have you feel that today. And then we're going to fire off your trigger, your anchor. So that next time when you are auditioning, you're going to use your anchor and you're going to automatically, you're going to be taken into that state of mind. So anchors can be visual, they can be auditory, they can be olfactory, gustatory, they can be kinesthetic. The type of anchor that I usually recommend to performers is a very simple one. Deep breath in, deep breath out. You know, pure empowerment. It's just like it courses right through you. It's unshakable. It's really strong like, a, like steel, you know, it's like metal. Mm -hmm. So it's so strong that you don't have to apologize for it. Um, nothing can take it away from you. Um, it's a, it's a kind kind of power. It's giving. It's also, you know, there's joy there and there's something positive about it, right? It's protection. You, pro you become protective of others when you have that power. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to, you know, I'm powerful, I'm egotistical, because there's a fine line between mm -hmm. when, you, when you feel that kind of power, it can be, you can lose that. There are moments you can lose that. When you, when, when to, when you begin to experience that ex really good power, it's nice to be able to say, I am protective, I'm kind, you know, I can take care of people. So 
turn it into that side. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? Mm -hmm. So that's something to know about power. You felt it before, you know what it feels like. It's strong, it's confident. We're going to go through that feeling because I want you to really anchor that. And, and I want you to get there really naturally, almost like the switch of the light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any questions? No, thanks. Okay. So, Dennis, you can adjust yourself comfortably and make sure you're in a comfortable position. I'd like you to move your attention for a moment into your body and just be aware of your whole body for a moment as you inhale and exhale. Be aware of your arms, your legs. In a moment, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you imagine something. So I want you to imagine that I am going to tie a string right into your right wrist. If that's okay, that I touch your wrist for a second, not your head. Okay. So I'm gonna do that, and I want you to imagine that this string is actually attached to a um, one or two, maybe three, very light helium balloons. You can even think of the color of those balloons. And they're, they're going to be so light that they would begin to take your hand higher and higher. Not just yet. When I tie that string, I want you to imagine, really create that in your mind, that your hand would begin to go up higher and higher and higher. As soon as I tie that string, just imagine, pretend, let's do this right now, and that string is attached into a very light healing balloon, one, two, or three balloons, and just allow yourself to feel that lightness, lightness in your hand, in your fingers, as it begins to rise up slightly, just centimeter, inch by inch, slightly, very slowly, and as it goes up, Notice your hand beginning to rise and with each and every breath, each and every count now as I count from one to ten. On the count of ten, it'll go up so very high. One going up, two rising. See those balloons, three, four going up, up, higher, Five, that's right. Six, going up. Seven, drifting deeper and deeper. Deeper, relaxed. Seven, more and more relaxed. And eight, deeper, relaxed. Nine, and ten, and stay right there. And just notice all the sensations in your hand. Pay attention to nothing else but your hand, your muscles, your wrist, your elbow, and how your arm feels at the moment. Getting very relaxed, perhaps it feels a little heavier than your left hand. Notice the difference, because in a moment when I count from one to three, Dennis, imagine as if I'm going to cut that string with scissors, and your hand will literally drop so very heavy. One, two, three, let it drop, deeper, relaxed, that's right, more and more relaxed. I'd like you to imagine yourself right now, I'm looking at a board, a blackboard, or maybe it's a white board. On that board, I'd like you to begin to imagine, imagine shapes appearing, like a big giant square, big square, four even lines. Inside of that square, go ahead and place a big circle. Inside of that circle, you can go ahead and place a triangle. Inside of that triangle, Dennis, Dennis go ahead and place a circle. There's still some space left, so you can go ahead and place another square. 
And finally, inside of that square, place another circle. Still a little space left. Notice yourself getting more and more relaxed. Each and every shape inside of that little circle. Go ahead and place another triangle. And maybe there's a little space left just for one more shape. Place another circle. That's right. Inside of that circle, place a tiny, tiny little dot. And as you do, that's right. Little shapes be gone, gone, disappear into nothing, nothing, nothing. And let yourself relax. More and more relax. Just stay right there, comfortably relaxed. Drifting more and more into a peaceful, comforting state of relaxation. Now, I'd like you to begin to imagine something. On that board, I'd like you to begin to visualize numbers. Quite slowly at first, 200, and just go deeper and deeper, relaxed. 199, deep, relaxed. I want you to think, think of the farm. Maybe you've been on the farm. You can think of how it might look like. And I want you to think, think of the fences. Fences of stone, perhaps, or wood. Those fences which would contain the animals within certain area. Some farmers contain their animals within certain area with electric fences so that the animals don't wander too far. Now that fence is, it's not harsh, of course. If the animal touches the wire, they will receive that slight jolt, not enough to kill or cause any injury. If you know what I'm talking about, raise your index finger. Good. But just enough, thank you, just enough to, to, to cause that jolt so the animal remembers what it feels like not to trespass that area because what's interesting, Dennis, the, the farmer can remove the wire, but the animals will still remain within that confined area. What's more interesting to me is that the farmer can remove the fence altogether and the animals will still remain within that confined area as if the fence was still there. See, human minds are no different from the from animals. Throughout our life, as we grow up, our teachers or parents are authority figures to us. If you agree with me, raise your index finger. Good. See, they are authority figures to us, and whatever they say, or and let's say they say, you're not that bright, you're not good enough, or it's not going to happen, we begin to believe those ideas. Or they say, you know, it's not, it's not for us. So you begin to believe those ideas. You know, certain events can happen, and some events can be positive, some negative, and they can create also some sort of negative thinking. So it's almost like a jolt that keeps you limited. If you understand what I'm talking about, raise your index finger. So what it does, it creates a barrier. Like, the animals would create that barrier, and they would never go past that, that area where the fence was located. There are invisible barriers in the mind, and they can be removed. Today, we are going to remove the invisible barriers that could have been created in your mind, whether you've been conscious of it or not. We can remove those wires all together, once and for all, for the rest of your life. So you can be free to walk, to roam, free anywhere you want. So you can be completely yourself. Despite the circumstances and beliefs you could have acquired from the past, from your environment, society, or family, whatever, the mind is very powerful. It's like a sponge. It takes things in. We emulate things. We believe things. If you hear my voice, raise your index finger. Good. So I'm going to count from one to three. On the count of three, you will consciously release all and any invisible barriers that could possibly keep you limited. On the count of three, you will release all and any invisible barriers in the form of negative beliefs or disempowering beliefs and thoughts. One, two, three, release them. Make that decision, make that conscious, unconscious decision to let go of them. There's no need to hold on to them.
You have no need to hold on to them. From this time onward, Dennis, it can be you, completely you, authentic you. You can feel confident when you are on stage. You can feel confident when you audition because you deserve it. You can. Doors are open for you. Deep, deep within yourself, you truly believe that the doors are open. And if they're closed, they will open. Doors are opening. You are your best. You thrive. You love to act. You love to perform. You like, you enjoy to, to give you light and shine your talent. You like to share. If that's true, raise your index finger. Good. So from this time onward, you really begin to revise any and all negative and disempowering beliefs. Your mind will continue to show you, to show you how easily those beliefs and thoughts can be reframed into positive beliefs. You believe in yourself. You like yourself. You realize you deserve more success as an actor. You realize that it's actually pretty easy to get to act in film and television. There's so many shows, there's so many parts, and they need you. They need your talent, they need your look, they need specifically you for certain parts. If you agree with me, raise your index finger. Good. So you believe from deep, deep within that doors are either open or if they're closed, they will open. One door is closed, another opens, or the other door that is closed, they can knock again and it will open. That's right. They can easily open. It's very easy, Dennis. It's so very easy. It's easy for you to audition. You feel confident, you feel connected, and you feel present. Now, Dennis, I want you to, to say this out loud so I can hear it. I always feel confident when I audition. I always feel confident when I audition. I always feel present when I audition. I always feel present when I audition. It's easy for me to be in the moment when I audition. It's easy for me to be in the moment when I audition. I am connected with myself when I audition. I am connected with myself when I audition. I feel calm and relaxed when I audition. I feel calm and relaxed when I audition. Casting directors like me. Casting directors like me. I am a likable guy. I'm a likable guy. Casting directors want me to succeed. Casting directors want me to succeed. I succeed every day. I succeed every day. Doors are open for me. Doors are open for me. If they're closed, they open. If they're closed, they open. I deserve success on film and television. I deserve success in film and television. I succeed in film and television. I succeed in film and television. I get acting parts on television. I get acting parts on television. It's easy to get acting parts on television. It's easy to get acting parts on television. It's easy for me to get acting parts on television. It's easy for me to get acting parts on television. When I audition, I feel my best. When I audition, I feel my best. When I audition, I feel happy. When I audition, I feel happy. When I audition, I feel positive. When I audition, I feel positive. That's right. So you will feel positive. You always feel positive when you audition. You enjoy audition. You like audition. It's exciting. It's exciting for you to audition. You enjoy auditioning. It's easy for you to audition. I repeat, it's easy for you to audition. You get naturally into a state of comfort, ease, and confidence. You exude confidence. You enjoy that state of power you have. Now, tennis, think of the time when you felt empowered. Maybe you've, you've been on stage, you were connected, or something happened, but you just felt that power deep within you. If you can think of that time, nod your head. Good. So go ahead and bring yourself right there into that moment where you feel so empowered, you feel so confident, you feel so strong. Really feel it in your body. Notice that sensation. 
Notice how it feels like to, to have it in your chest, in your heart, all throughout your body and in your mind. How mentally you just feel so good, so connected. It makes you feel good all around. Have that power course right through you. I'm going to count from one to five. With each count, I want you to increase the level of that power, that confidence, that sensation. You know what it feels like to have power, do you? If you do, nod your head. Good. So allow yourself to feel it in your heart, feel it in your body. Notice how it feels every single sensation and perhaps you're saying something to yourself. I'm awesome. I'm great. Absolutely. I thrive. I'm so good at what I do. I'm in the zone state. One. On the count of five, you're going to take a deep breath in. And when you breathe out, silently and forcefully, you're going to say to yourself the word power. One, feeling that power, feeling the joy of power. Two and three, so connected, so present, so in the zone state. Four, feeling it all over your body, your mind, your whole being, your psyche. Number five, take a deep breath in. And exhale, and silently say to yourself, power. That's right. It's yours, Dennis. It's yours. It's always there. It doesn't go away. No one can take it away from you. On the count of five, you're going to open your eyes and come back into a fully awake state. One, slowly easily and gently beginning to come back refreshed as if you took a long nice power nap and number five Dennis at your at your own pace you can come back right here right now feeling good relaxed energized welcome back how are you doing Good. So, how was this relaxation for you? Ah, uh, good. It was. Uh, I was um, present, but relaxed the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, there was like maybe twice where my a thought popped in, but then it just went away real quickly. Yeah. Um, but I was. Uh, it's very good. It's mm -hmm. something that I've been uh, thinking about for quite a while. So to. Be brave to attack it like this. Is, I'm, I'm very happy to meet you as well. Yeah, good. Cheers. Good.